Hello Adventure, welcome to Singapore, a fine city with a wealth of things to do. Today, I'll bring you to the top 15 to-dos that my friends always loved when I bring them out on their first visit. We're gonna see Singapore's iconic city skyline, impressive modern gardens, exotic cultural spots, and fill ourselves with local foods. Let's begin. To start the day, breakfast at the legendary Yakun Toast. So I have to confess, I eat this almost every other week, but I'm not the only one. You'll see a long queue every morning, especially on the weekend. What makes this toast so good is that they found the perfect ratio between crispy bread, sweet savory kaya, and the cold butter in the center. To taste all that combination in each bite is heaven. To enjoy the soft boiled eggs, usually I'll add a dash of soy sauce, generously sprinkle white pepper, and slurp away. I don't have to warn you that you should eat all the toast outside because the moment you pack them, they get soggy real quick. They have many chains all across the island, so you can just visit any one. You have to try the kaya toast with butter set. Next, we are visiting one of the most vibrant cultural areas in Singapore. The easiest way to get here is to take train to Bugis MRT, exit via exit B, and walk along the Victoria Street. When you see Arab Street, turn right. You can just look out for the Golden Minarets. That is the Sultan Mosque, and we're going there first. The Sultan Mosque is a magnificent landmark that has stood for almost a hundred years. If you plan to visit the interior, you have to follow their dress code. Otherwise, you can just borrow these coverings for free. Non-Muslim are only allowed outside the fenced area. I really like the Muscat street side for the historical street arts. I feel like they gave me a glimpse of what Singapore looked like in the past. I find this a lot more enjoyable than the museums. One street down, you'll find another gem. The Haji Lane. So the whole street is really full of cute little shops. Honestly, I really don't know what half of these shops are selling, but that's the fun part. The moment I see something very interesting, I just go inside the shop and find out what it is. Vintage weekend. Look at all this. How come when I do it, it's called vandalism? By the way, I've designed this list in a sequence. So, if you're following through, you can just take the same bus and train as me. Next, we'll dive into Singapore's rich Chinese heritage in Chinatown. Hop onto bus 145 from the bus stop that's behind the mosque, and in a few stops, you'll arrive at the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. The temple building itself is actually pretty new, but it's monumental and it's full of character. And you can visit the interior, but take note that you will need to follow the Arab dress code. It's lunchtime. Can I tell you a secret? It's actually super easy to find affordable and delicious food in Singapore. Everyone always thinks that Singapore, everything is always expensive. But they haven't been to the hawker centers. Just across the road from the temple is one of Singapore's top hawker center, the Maxwell Food Center. Hawker centers are the best place to get a good variety of food at a very affordable cost. Check out these prices. You can easily settle your lunch, drink, and dessert in under $10. <laughs> Thank you. Now, actually, I don't know what to eat, but the best part of the hawker center is that there are so many options to choose from. Usually, I just walk around until I see something that I want to eat. Or, I will spy on which shop has a lot of queue, because most of the time, that's where the good foods are. You can sit anywhere in the hawker center, but you might notice that some tables have things on them. This is how we reserve tables at the hawker centers, also known locally as choked. People will find empty tables, choke them with their things, then buy their food. Someone just used their phone to book a seat. You 
see that phone. It's been there for a while. So, feel free to choke your own table, but please don't use overly expensive items. Although Singapore is safe, don't tempt the devil. If you can't find an empty table, just find empty seats and ask them if it's occupied. Sorry, is this taken? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so most of the time, people here don't mind sharing tables. Thank you so much. One of my favorite things to do when I eat out with my friends at hawker centers is to each of us buy different food items. Then we eat together, share everything, so that we get to try out a lot of food without ordering too much. Now, it's also a punishable crime if you don't return your used utensils. Wanna hear something mind-blowing? About 200 years ago, Singapore was just a small village. Let's visit the Singapore City Gallery to find out how it happened. Just cross the street from Maxwell Food Center to get here. The afternoon is the best for indoor exploration because temperature outside is the hottest right now. And this gallery is air-conditioned. This is a very fun museum to learn about how Singapore transformed into the beautiful city that we know today. Now, I'll take you to see why Singapore is often called a garden city. We're heading to the Gardens by the Bay. To get there, go to the train station and take the brown line to Gardens by the Bay. Exit the station via exit number one. When I first heard about Gardens by the Bay, I thought it was very lame because I thought, how good can a man-made garden be? Follow the path with the water body on your right. Right now, you will be able to see a little bit of the Singapore skyline, but still blocked by some structures and some trees. Don't worry, I promise you, I'll bring you somewhere that you can see the full view of the Singapore skyline and in a much better environment rather than this sweltering heat. These glass buildings on our left are the cloud forest and the flower dome. And guys, this is where I went wow. And it's also all air conditioned inside. Where else do you see so many cacti, baobab trees, succulents, and so many flowers? If you liked the flower dome, this next one will also be jaw dropping the cloud forest. The cloud forest is a little bit different than flower dome. While flower dome recreates gardens from all over the world, the cloud forest is trying to recreate the highland tropical rainforest. That's why it's called the cloud forest. Now, I recommend taking a short break here to get some food because we're gonna be here for a while more. I'm just getting a Shake Shack burger for the convenience. If I brought more friends, I would eat at a more local eatery nearby called the Satay by the Bay. Nearer to the Bayfront area, there's also the Floral Fantasy. It's pretty nice, but I think it's a bit small and for this price point, I won't really recommend it. The Flower Dome, Cloud Forest and the Floral Fantasy all requires additional ticket purchase. Here's the price comparison for resident and non-resident. If you plan to visit all of the parks, there's a website that offers discount. It's still very pricey to visit all of them, so if you have to choose, I would say don't miss the Flower Dome. If you're on a budget, the good thing is the whole surrounding areas are full of fantastic gardens that are free to explore, including the upside-down cones over there. 
those upside down cones are the super trees and this area is called the super tree grove these super trees look nice but the real magic actually comes alive at night when they glow there are two places you can go up to this long bridge behind me that is called the OCBC Skyway and the biggest super tree that's the super tree observatory let's go up to the observatory to see what it's like So the best view here is the MBS itself. You also get to see the Singapore Flyer there. And that's where we were, the Cloud Forest and the Flower Dome. Over here, you get to see a little bit of the port. There is some ocean view as well with all the container ships. What do you think? If we go back down the staircase, we can also walk around the lower deck. And even chill at the cafe. Although they say you can only stay up here for 30 minutes, I don't think they'll actually kick you out. The biggest draw to the Super Tree Grove is this amazing musical light show that you can watch for free. It's called the Garden Rhapsody. They actually have different show every month. Is the light show nicer from above or below? Uh, below. Uh, the atrium outside. Atrium yeah, outside. Because the lights are actually on the trees and stuff. Right? So if, ah. you're, if you're going up, then you're actually on one of the trees. So you're catching like 50% of the show. Now, the problem is, where is the best spot to plant myself to watch the light show? By the way, their song is copyrighted, so I can't show you everything. But I can substitute the song and show you what it's like. Wow, I have to say, there was quite a show and it was all free. So definitely worth your while to come here and watch the light show. Regarding the best spot, from my observation, it will be this point over here. Center your view to the Super Tree Observatory, the OCBC Skyway and the ship looking building should be in the background. Though, if you want to secure this view, you might need to be here very early. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like so that more people can enjoy it. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to a world-class shopping mall. So I don't always bring my friends to shopping malls in Singapore, but this shopping mall is different. It's right under that boat-looking building. To get there, just walk in that direction or follow the signboard that says Marina Bay Sands. There's a whole river that's running through the middle of the mall. They also have boat service you'll also find many luxury brands here what sold me in this shopping mall all their pillars and their floors are so well polished Patek Philippe if the floor is multiple tiles you should see the Patek Philippe becomes very messy and unreadable but as you can see when you when I move around the tiles it's still readable this is amazing look at that <laughs> but I haven't gotten to the bestest part of this shopping mall. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look. It's so nice. Okay, actually the one at Ion is a lot nicer. <laughs> but this is pretty good. So, this mall is pretty cool, right? Next, we're gonna watch another free light show, which is just over there. You have to go to level 1 of this shopping mall and then exit where you can see the water body. It's scheduled at 9 p.m. So you have a little bit of time to rest in the mall and look around until the light show starts. Look at everybody who's already ready, waiting for the show.
Wow, guys, what a magnificent light show. Wow, that was a blast, man. Now, I'm gonna bring you to my favorite spot to see the Singapore skyline. Let's go. To get there, we're gonna walk in that direction and we'll cross a bridge. This is the Esplanade, but you can't really see it well yet. Cross the Jubilee Bridge. And you'll find the most famous statue in Singapore, the half fish, half lion, the mer lion. This is the creature that inspired the name Singapore. Move past the mer lion. See that corner over there? In this corner is the best view of Singapore city skyline. Look, it's the mer lion. And there's the Esplanade. There's the Singapore flyer. That's the MBS and that's the CBD. Wow! I'm not done sharing with you the places that I love in Singapore. So I want you to join me on day two. Click over here and I'll see you there.